Hey guys, I'm Coxie. Three years ago, I obtained all pets in the game, and now it's time to run it back. A fresh new account with no stats or items, starting from scratch, with one goal in mind, speedrunning all pets as fast as possible. This is Funny Feelings. Good morning. It is a new day. Last night, we got our quest point cape. I've been doing two farm runs a day, morning farm run and night farm run. These are just regular trees and fruit trees, but 82 farming, 1800 total, two nice levels. Let's go. In between BA rounds and any downtime that I have, I've been trying to utilize it on master clue requirements with either crafting and herb lore, the two easy bank skills. We just got 87 herb lore. That allows us to not have to pot for anti-venoms. A Sherlock step, another master clue requirement, out of the way. Yo, the recording's a little bit late, but another heal PB, 1138. Whew, we had smashed the sub 12, 11.38. We still have more time to chip off. That wasn't a perfect round by any means, but getting faster, getting better, improvement every single day, baby. Okay, so quick talk. We're 77 fishing right now, and I need 87 fishing for the Sacred Eel Sherlock step. An Admiral Pie will boost me plus five. So for now, 82 fishing will suffice for this Master Clue step. To optimize my pet efficiency, I should not touch two Tick Sword fish anymore until I have Temple Ross pet. I need to prioritize Temple Ross because my permits per hour is not affected by my fishing level, whereas Heron Pet and the success rate of catching swordfish with the two tick method is highly affected by my level. In other terms, when you're going for both pets and assuming that you're still below 99 fishing, you should always do Tiny Temper before Heron. Oh boy, another Sherlock step we cannot complete. This is an 80 crafting requirement. I'm going to get right on it. Might as well just make today a lazy day and knock these crafting levels out of the way. There's 75. Nice and quick. And 76 crafting. We are stuck on an 80 crafting requirement, but 76 we can boost plus four with a mushroom pie, allowing us to continue on with this master clue. Let's go. What is our luck today? Oh, two crafting requirements. We get hit with the 80 crafting requirement. Now we get hit with a Dorgish Khan light orb. This is 87 crafting. All right, well, let's open this casket and we will get to this clue later. That is a lot of crafting we gotta do. Eh, we'll take it. It's better than the average. Oh boy, look at that bank value. One billion GP bank has been surpassed. We're sitting at 182 gambles right now. It's around 60 torsos that we've done, assuming three gamble count per torso. And uh, we've made around 900 mil from BA. Around 100 mil has been made from other miscellaneous stuff, but one billion GP surpassed. Let's go. We just got done with a nice Temple Ross session. We're getting really close to 500 permits now. Just hit 78 fishing. And we have enough flakes now to buy ourselves full Spirit Angler. Spirit Angler is really nice. It allows us to not have to bring a rope inside of Temple Ross. Saves us an inventory space. I'm never going to be complaining about that. Another Temple Ross session completed. We hit 80 fishing this session and we passed 1,000 rolls. Tiny Temper is a long one. It's one in 8,000 rate. Don't know why they made it that high, but we will be here for quite a while, pushing on to 82 fishing for the Master Clue requirement and uh, one eighth of the way to the pet rate. Think. Oh, 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 wait, this is really big. Uh, we just got Mimic. Nice, this is Master Clue number 12, I think? Uh, we finally got our Mimic. This is a one in 15 rate for Master Clue, so we are under rate. This is very big for Music Cape. Getting the music soundtrack is fantastic. Mimic is one of the ones that people get stuck on, and Music Cape is insanely quality of life for Master Clues, so actually very big. First Mimic out of the way. Give me anything good, please. Oh, oh, hello there. All right, Master Clue number 12 is... Oh, insanely average. Nice. 85 farming and 1825 total. This means no more boosting for spirit trees and we can enter the upper level of the farming guild without a boost. There is 75 mining. Seven more levels until we have the master clue requirement done. 82 mining with a plus three pickaxe boost is going to get us to 85. We're also 20 nuggets away from full prospector, but uh, that'll come with time. You know those days where you really just feel like relaxing and doing a bank skill? Well, yeah, that's how I'm feeling today. So I decided to make it a crafting day and knock out the last remaining crafting levels to continue on with our master clue. 
87 is the highest crafting requirement from Master Clues, the Dorgashin Khan Light Orb. And from 83, it's easily boostable with a Mushroom Pie. So with this level, we can continue on nice and easy. Nice, 76 mining. I'm starting to get in the rhythm with this method and I love it. 77 quick levels right now, quick. Gaming, 80 smithing. I'm gonna say it every time we have a smithing clip in this series. I love Blast Furnace. I'm gonna miss it so much. 80 smithing. We have a few more levels to go until our master clue wreck is completed. 84 smithing, which is going to bring Blast Furnace to an end on this series. Corvix Ale is a plus four viable boost. 88 smithing is the requirement for a rune med helm, which is the highest smithing requirement for master clue. So this does officially knock off another master clue requirement. Blast Furnace, goodbye, my friend. Goodbye, Motherload Mining. I'm gonna miss the nice relaxing mining XP we did get to gain from here, but that is full prospector obtained and another master clue requirement ticked off and out of the way. Out with Blast Furnace and in with Jim Rock Mining. You wanna talk about smooth and rhythmic methods? This is literally it. The cycle is super nice and consistent. I love it. Part of the reason why I love it so much is because the success rate is actually very high at all levels. I'll leave the full explanation for another day, but with this method, you're actually rolling an attempt at mining the ore twice, which is why the success rate at, let's say, level 75 is already over 90%. In short terms, gem rock's good. Plus, we just hit 80 mining. There she is, 82 mining. That checks off. One of the final master clue requirements with the spec. We can now get to 85. We are out of here. Surprisingly enough, not only is this method fantastic, but you're also making around 1 mil an hour. And yeah, look at that 12 million GP earned just from a nice quick 82 mining. We will take those. It is pretty late at night right now. And I was just looking for some nice AFK, you know, mindless content to do. 88 fire making. I do need to end up getting 90 at some point. There's not really a great boost for fire making. So on our way to 90 fire making, we will continue. Alrighty, it is a brand new day today. I just woke up. I'm 59 rune crafting. 77 rune crafting is the last requirement until I have all master wrecks done. And I never have to worry about getting a bad step again from Sherlock. As of now, I'm gonna run solo lavas while I figure out a game plan going forward and how we're gonna knock out 77 rune crafting. Okay, after talking to some skillers, I've worked out the one plus one lava rune crafting method, and it's really not too bad. Since this is a from scratch series as well, I'm obviously not going to be spending money on runners, so I had to figure out a way to alt myself. Right now, without giant pouch, I'm getting still over 70k an hour, so you know, I'm I'm happy with it for being new to the method. There is 70 rune crafting. This one plus one method has actually been so much fun. 75 rune crafting. You know what this means. 75 rune crafting is going to unlock giant pouch for me. I don't know what rates I should be expecting right now, but this should greatly increase my rates. I'm super excited. The last two levels are going to be nice and quick. 76. We are getting 83k per hour doing one plus one lavas with this giant pouch. This is great. Yo! Oh my gosh, that stretch was so needed. Oh, after two days of rune crafting all day, 77 has been obtained. That is all master clue requirements done in the entire game. I never have to worry about when I'm running to Sherlock, praying for a good step. We're 1869 total and we're free, no more skill locked. I am so excited to continue on with the game. We can actually start PVMing now without the worry of not being able to do master clue steps. Oh, it's a great day today. Great day. I've spent a ton of time over the last few weeks going for master clue requirements. So I wanted to reward myself with a fast and easy pet. Now, this isn't the most entertaining pet in the world, but Solars is just over 30 hours to hit the pet rate being in the top five for quickest pets in the game. Unfortunately, this method is not done by legitimately playing the mini game. You do utilize an alt to cap points and force in the game to get the most points per hour. Back when Solars was released and I was reobtaining all pets on my main account, Malfoy, this method wasn't around, so it's new to me, something that might take me some time to learn and get comfortable with.
You'll want your main account in Altsgear to look similar to this. Downgrade where necessary. If you don't have a dark bow, magic longbow or comp bow will suffice. These items have a guaranteed hit on spec, which will be important for this method. Locator orb on your alt is necessary for speedy games. On spawn, grab a potion from the bank on your main account and alt account. Leave the spawn room and path towards the middle. Drink a sip of the potion on both accounts to boost your stats. Split up your accounts between the north and the south side of the middle arena. Your main account will want to kill 3 big ghosts for 12 soul fragments, while your alt will kill 4 ghosts for 16 fragments. After your main account has killed 3 ghosts, path into the middle and start capping the center area. When your alt has its 16 fragments collected, locate or orb yourself down and head inward to the river in visible distance of your main account. While continuing to capture the center area on your main, Darkbow spec your alt and telegrab the 16 fragments that are now on the ground. Once the obelisk is capped to your main account's team color, deposit the soul fragments and start running to the enemy's team avatar. Blowpipe the enemy's team avatar until its health is less than 70% and you can now end the game on your alt at the spawn portal. After some practice, you will typically finish early and it's important to wait for the timer to be less than 12 minutes 10 seconds or you will end up losing zeal points. With games lasting roughly 2 minutes and 50 seconds, you should be getting 375 zeal per hour. A loot crate, otherwise known as a spoil of war, costs 30 zeal each. With Lil Creator being a rate of 1 in 400 crates, this method comes out to be roughly 32 hours to hit the pet rate, being one of the fastest achievable pets in the game. Yo, sit down, Avatar of Destruction. First game is completed. I don't know if I did this first game 100% correct, but I'll uh, work out the kinks. I'll figure everything out. 21 zeal, we'll take it. All right, I played my first few games. I have two spoils of war. I'm gonna go ahead and buy these, open these real quick before I go do a birdhouse run. There is crate number one and crate no Oh, oh no. No what? no! <laughs> two KC, I, no there's, I don't believe it, no way. A two KC little creator. Dude, I was just getting ready to go do a birdhouse run. I literally played three games, got two crates. Oh my gosh, the spooning continues. Okay, game plan. I need to get a crystal halberd. You're going to see why in a second, why I want a crystal halberd, but we need to do Western Province hard for that. So Zora, it is your turn to die. For Zora KC and any loot? No, we did get call log, but that is to be expected. And a PV, let's go! No, these poor chompies, they do not deserve to die like this in their own home. But unfortunately, that's not what I'm here for. 300 have been slain, and that's a hard diary wreck done. Western Province Hard Diaries has been completed. Of course, the XP lamp is going to go on agility, but finally, we get to see the importance of Crystal Halvard on the account and what I plan on doing with it. All right, listen up. It's time to talk. I will not be doing any NMZ or crabs on this account, so I need a game plan on how to get my combat stats up before I start PVMing. I'm not trying to walk into the Sir Blair with like 74 strength, so going forward, I'm going to be using Chale on Dust Devil tasks and Necreal tasks and utilizing my alts to spec transfer. I'm going to keep pushing Slayer in the meantime to work on my combat stats before I can actually get started with proper PVM. I'm not sure what the XP rates are going to look like, but with constant Chally specs on these mobs, it should be pretty good and these levels should start flying up. Yeah, wow, this Chally is beautiful. We are still on the same day today. We've gone from 80 to 82 Slayer and 75 to 80 Strength. We're averaging 178k strength XP per hour today. Just chally specking Necreal Dustable tasks and doing other regular Slayer tasks like normal. This is insane. Okay, 90 farming in the first level 90 on this account. I'm happy with it. I'm happy that it goes to farming. We're still only doing our morning and night farm runs. Uh, we're not doing a proper pet hunt farm runs yet. The proper pet hunt farm runs include stuff like cactus, belladonna, mushroom, seaweed. I'm just doing regular trees and fruit trees right now. We will include all the other extra stuff when I get my bank tab set up. But for now, I'm just enjoying doing regular trees and fruit trees in the morning and nights. Gargoyle task is absolutely not going to be something I'm doing. It's not efficient. I don't need the money from it. It's not good Slayer XP per hour, but it does drop Brittle Key. 
and there it is. So that unlocks Grotesque Guardians for us. We're not going to start GG's right now, but it's just good to have in the future when I do. There is just no way. We are already at 200 gamble count for BA. Once again, this is a one in 1,000 pet rate. So we are already a fifth of the rate. This is the third longest pet in the game. We're already a fifth of the rate of. Wow, I love this mini game so much. I hope it doesn't go by too quick. I'm never gonna say I hope I go dry on a pet, but I will not complain if it takes me the full 1,000 gambles for this pet. Back on the Slayer grind, we just hit 80 defense. Now, 80 defense and 80 prayer unlocks the Ella Dennis Ward, the new offhand mage item from TOA. I don't think I'm ever gonna upgrade it because it does need a arcane spirit shield. And that's a lot of money to invest, but just the base offhand is 3% extra magic damage. Just hit 81 strength as well. Nice levels. I don't know how long we're gonna slay for, but I know that maxing out my combats is an absolute necessity for this series. So while I'm enjoying Slayer, I'm just gonna keep pushing. 1900 total i'm not gonna complain about that 88 hp we also just hit 84 strength gosh we've only been playing this account for close to two and a half months and we're already at 1900 total i am so happy with the progress so far wow chally slayer is beautiful we just started chally slayer about two to three days ago we went from 74 to 85 strength in what felt like in no time this is a level i'm finally happy with starting pvm on we're probably going to switch back to while i am slaying just barrage only on these necreal and dust double tasks but yeah 85 strength nice Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the first big alt method on this account. I am so excited. Part of the reason why I wanted to do this is because I wanted to get better at alting. I wanted to experience these metas, and now is that time. The strength and mage have gotten pretty high from Slayer, but I'm ready to focus on range. The old and comfortable method for range training used to be MM2 capes, but with the addition of Tombs of a Masket, a new method was born. Welcome to the Zavak Madness you guys are about to witness. Not only is it better XP per hour than chaining in MM2 caves, but it's almost completely free. Other than the gear cost, the only supplies that are needed are some range pots and ruby bolts. I've been told a wide range of XP rates, but I'm personally just hoping that I can get more than 1 million range XP per hour. You can use up to 7 alts in one main account, 8 accounts in total. I'm currently using 6 alts, so I'll lose a small amount of XP there. The method you're about to see is pretty straightforward, despite it being high effort. You're going to go into a raid, you'll want its invocation level to be as high as possible, and the important thing is to make sure you have no death invocations enabled. You'll want its invocation level to be high because the XP rates of hitting Zabok scale on invocation level. So the higher the invocation level, the higher XP drops you're going to get. You'll want to get yourself in a nice cycle where you're specking every hit and then dying and restarting the room. Man, the levels are soaring. We started today in the mid 80s. We are already 91 range. Dude, I feel like I just blinked and I just gained 2 million XP in a second. Whew. 92 range. I'm probably going to do two more levels. I'm definitely not going to 99. I think 94 is a good place to stop. Somewhere around 94, 95 and 94 range so i am gonna go ahead and pull out now i do get a ton of range xp throughout pet hunting but i also want to have decent range going into it i don't want to just start pet hunting with 80 range but i also don't want to go straight to 99 the dps difference between 94 and 99 is not that high so i think this is a good stopping point 94 range we started in the mid 80s we flew through this as a reward from the big day of range training i'm gonna do some cg I absolutely love this content. I've been looking forward to the pet hunt since I started the series, but I didn't want to actually start it until I had 90 plus range mage and some decent melee stats. We finally have those now, so let's finish off the day with some nice old corrupted gauntlet. I absolutely lied to you guys. We are not starting with corrupted gauntlet, rather regular gauntlet. Uh, first KC out of the way. Pet rate is dumb. I don't even know the pet rate from regular gauntlet. Nobody should ever hunt the pet from regular gauntlet. Not going to expect it, but uh, first KC out of the way and off to CG we go. 
Good night, Hunliff. Wow, CG with these stats does feel great. It almost feels like I'm on a maxed account. Doesn't quite, but DPS is definitely up there. First KC loot is a whole lot of nothing. And KC number three. We are currently at 3KD against Hunliff. We have not died. Yep. Oh. Oh, Crystal Armor. What? Crystal Armor seat on 3KC. We will take those. Everybody look away, okay? Everybody look. I don't know why I have not bought an augury. I don't know why I have not gotten this scroll. It's not like it's that useful, but I should have had this a long time ago, okay? Ignore what you're seeing on screen. We got augury. Prayer book is done. Hallelujah. Yesterday was our big range training day. We only ended up doing like five CG KC last night. I really just wanted to dip my toes into it to celebrate having high range and high mage. But 85 Slayer, I don't know how long I'm going to continue Slayer. I am enjoying it a lot right now. I might just push up to 87, unlock Kraken as well. But 85 Slayer unlocks Sire. Now we have GG's. We have Sire and soon to be Kraken unlocked. Finally, the first Jad task on the account. Now, I did end up buying Masori a couple days ago for our Zabak range training day. And let me tell you right now, it is criminal how cheap it is. The body was around 90 mil and the chaps were 66 mil. That money was easily obtained through BA, which allows me to have an insane upgrade. Full Masori is massive and I'll be using it throughout the entire account. So I might as well get it early. No pet from the kill, no pet from the gamble, but that's all right. We take those. First KC done, out of the way. Many, many more to come. Slayer is rolling and the levels are flying in. 86 Slayer, 90 Mage, both basically at the same time. We'll take them. Ooh, ee, okay. First Abyssal Demon task post 85 Slayer. And of course we get a whip on the first task. Why not? Call log slot, easy money. Yes, sir. Okay, I have a little surprise for you guys. Tarn's Lair needed to imbue my salve amulet, which I need for a very important upgrade here to come, but we'll get there, no spoilers. Today is the spring cleaning of the account, doing many things that I probably should have done by now. Uh, let's just knock out Ferocious Gloves out of the way. This is a best in slot upgrade that I have been needing to do for a while. And ooh, look at that gear. Where could we be heading next? Hello, Vorkath, my old friend. It is finally time to upgrade our backpack. I want to get an Ava Assembler. I probably should have done it before the ZCB range training, but, you know, late is better than never, so let's get it out of the way now. First KC, I don't... Why couldn't I have gotten it on the first KC, man? This account was so unlucky. And nice little 5 KC coming on. Oh. Oh. Okay, I take back everything I said about this account not being lucky. 5kc for Cathead. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, you get a guaranteed one at 50, so it's not like you have to be here for too long. But wow. Okay, I was not expecting it that early. Let's go. Another day, another Slayer session. And we are just now hitting 87, which unlocks Kraken. Oh boy, I am excited to show you guys this Kraken method. I've been cooking up a really hot Kraken method in my head that I'm excited to bring to the table. 87 Slayer, really good. I'm going to take a break here and I'm going to head somewhere else. Oh boy, time for my favorite part of this account. It is upgrade time. Seriously though, Bofa is a very universal weapon. It's Definitely not the same power as a Tebow, but it is a really good replacement and a useful item to have in general at this stage of the game for me. Both his stats are buffed with the three crystal armor pieces, so let's go ahead and make those as well. Oh, we look like an absolute champion. Holy. We have been upgrading our gear and really building this account to something I'm proud of, but we're missing one important item still. An item that's known by everyone who's touched this game. An untradeable item that's arguably the hardest to obtain. Next up on this account, we're going for the fucking Inferno Cape, baby. Wait, what?
Please hit game. Come on, Bofa, give it to me. Yes. Oh, let's go, baby. Whew. Only two sets with Bofa. Has to be some decent RNG. I am not happy with this taking multiple attempts, but the cape is ours. For a speedrun, I probably should have won and done this, but it's okay. I'll make up the lost time in the future. Thankfully, no pet on the first KC, because I am absolutely excited to do these in the future on task with better gear. Wow, Inferno really is such great content. Easily one of the best updates to hit this game. Class is officially in session, but today's only half day. We're gonna keep it really short. On this pet, putting it simply, we got dumb lucky. So lucky that it's hard to even visualize, so I'm gonna do the best that I can. Let's say that we have a thousand RuneScape players who are all going for this pet. In a perfect world, at 800 crates open, 865 out of the 1,000 players would have at least one little creator pet. At 400 crates, the drop rate, 633 players would have at least one little creator pet. At two crates, the rate I obtained this pet, only five out of the 1,000 RuneScape players would have gotten the pet by now. We are in the lucky 0.5 percentile for Lil Creator. Despite it being a quick pet, I ultimately saved myself over 30 hours in 600 Soul Wars games if I were to continue on to the drop rate of the pet. We are off to a banging start on this speedrun. We are quickly approaching the three month mark since we created this account and the progress is still amazing. Over the last month, we've logged roughly 11 days in game playtime and have gained 132 total levels. We have finished off all master clue requirements and our combat stats are PVM ready. The bank value is roughly 1.3 billion GP and we've obtained two very strong untradeable gear upgrades, Abba's Assembler and the Inferno Cape. To close everything out, we've finally gotten our third pet on the account, Lil Creator. 